This broadcast has done extensive reporting on the effects of climate change. They said it was impossible. Who in their right mind would drop thousands of water-loving beavers into one of the driest regions in America? And yet that's exactly what a team of ecologists did. A beaver can fell a cottonwood tree in just a few hours, hundreds in a year. The beaver doesn't chew through the whole trunk just enough to make the tree unstable. It then retreats and lets the wind do the rest. It wasn't a stunt. It was a last-ditch effort to reverse decades of environmental decline. The land was cracked. Rivers had vanished and entire ecosystems were collapsing. The plan? Let nature's greatest engineers try to fix it. At first, even the scientists had doubts. But then something happened. Slowly, shockingly, the desert began to change. The experts who traced this bold ecological restoration were left in utter shock. How could beavers bring life back to a dying desert? Let's find out why thousands of beavers, when desertification threatened the southwestern region of the United States in the early 2020s, environmental scientists and local communities faced a dire question. How do you restore water to land where it refuses to stay? The answer, surprising as it sounds, came in the form of thousands of beavers. This radical restoration initiative began when a consortium of ecologists and water management experts studied traditional methods of rainwater harvesting, reforestation, and ground contouring but found them slow and expensive. Then came the idea, what if nature's original engineers were given a chance? Beavers, with their instinctual dam-building abilities, could be the key to rehydrating desert streams and restoring groundwater levels. Between 2022 and 2023, thousands of beavers were carefully relocated from overpop populated watersheds in northern states to carefully selected dry river corridors in the American Southwest. Sites were picked for their potential to sustain beaver habitats, even temporarily based on proximity to intermittent water sources and vegetation like cottonwood and willow. Each release was overseen by wildlife biologists who tagged and monitored the animals. Ecologists weren't experimenting without precedent. Beavers have been long admired for their reputation as ecosystem engineers. Their dams create ponds, reservoirs, and wetlands. In wet climates, these additions help regulate flood cycles and improve water quality. But in arid regions, the challenge was dramatic. Could they succeed where water shortages were severe? Initially, experts were deeply skeptical. One hydrologist pointed out, We don't even have flowing rivers half the year. How in the world do you expect beavers to build dams here? A wildlife biologist cautioned about unintended consequences. Do we risk harming those ecosystems we're trying to save if the beavers go too far or not far enough? The research team responded thoughtfully. They didn't drop all the animals at once. They began with pilot packs of a few dozen beavers in several locations. The plan was to observe behavior, breeding success, vegetation recovery, and the ability to maintain water in these degraded streams. Early results were intriguing. Even the skeptics had to admit something was happening. Small ponds began to appear within weeks. The beavers, far from struggling, were instinctively building lodge structures, gnawing nearby cottonwoods, and plugging channels. Each pond held water longer than expected, even in the heat of summer. Soil, moisture levels rose and shrubs slowly returned along the banks. That alone was shocking to many. Headlines spoke of mass intervention, but the real surprise came when those first dozen turned into hundreds. As baby kits from the initial families began to disperse, biologists realized the population might be self-sustaining. These were not zoo animals under constant watch. They were wild beavers adapting to a system that most had thought would fail. What began as a trial soon became a full-scale effort by mid-2023. With hundreds of ponds now sprouting in dry channels, researchers felt confident. More beavers were introduced until thousands called these desert waters home. That's when attention turned from biology to ecology and hydrology. How much water would be held back? What about wildlife, soil stability, and fire risk? Would this really change the land? When the built infrastructure of roads and reservoirs is expensive and permanent, beaver dams offer a flexible, natural alternative. They don't require engineering equipment or bulldozers, just instinctual behavior guided by environmental needs. And the implications extend far beyond one desert. So why thousands of beavers? Because nature offered a better plan, one that adapts, scales, and endures. And as the first ponds grew, the ripple effect became clear. 
This was more than an experiment. It was a possible blueprint for desert restoration. When the first handful of beavers arrived in the American Southwest in early 2023, expectations were low. But within weeks, small wooden dams began appearing in dry washes, forming shallow pools where there had been none. That moment marked a shift in perception. The ponds retained water well beyond seasonal rains, even during peak heat, transforming streams into broader pools. These water bodies trapped sediment, cooled the ground, and spread moisture into previously arid areas. I expected signs, said Dr. Miner, Eliza Moreno, a hydrologist. But I didn't expect it to happen so fast. Within three weeks, changes normally taking months were visible. The beavers weren't just constructing dams, they were reshaping watersheds. Local rangers noted stark visual differences. Images showed once dry creek beds now hosting reflective ponds. The transformation was sudden and widespread. Park visitors and farmers shared similar stories. One found a beaver lodge beside a new pool. Another reported a one-foot rise in his well's water level, likely due to nearby groundwater recharge. To quantify the change, researchers used sensors and geological surveys. Soil moisture near dam sites rose 20-30% in just three months. Microclimate stations recorded slight drops in temperature from increased evaporation and shade, enough to spur dormant vegetation back to life. Cottonwood shoots sprouted naturally without artificial irrigation. For desert ecologists, the sudden presence of water was just the start. The ponds quickly became oases. Wildlife returned birds, amphibians, mammals, all drawn to the new habitats. Yet researchers remained cautious. Beavers sometimes abandon dams, and desert heat can cause rapid evaporation. But the early structures held firm, reinforced by beavers even after storm. The quality and speed of the ecological rebound were unexpected. Motion cameras confirmed the revival. Frogs, long thought extinct in the area, reappeared and began breeding. Birds arrived in flocks, including ducks and herons species dependent on standing water. Their return signaled sustainable change. Mammals soon followed. Footage revealed foxes, kangaroo rats, and bobcats drinking, hunting, and nesting near the ponds. Field teams discovered animal burrows just meters from active dams, surrounded by fresh tracks. The desert was no longer empty. It had become a refuge. Even amphibians made a comeback. In pockets where water lingered, frogs began to thrive. Each appearance confirmed that the changes weren't temporary, they were ecological rebirths. By mid-2023, word of these transformations spread. Universities, agencies, and conservation groups took notice. The success wasn't theoretical, it was measurable, visible, and spreading. What began with a few beavers had become a regional phenomenon. The desert had changed, redefined, not as barren, but as a landscape full of potential when nature is given space to lead. The return of frogs was particularly significant. They're highly sensitive to environmental changes and won't lay eggs in unstable or polluted water. Their comeback suggested that the beaver-built ponds weren't just wet, they were clean, sheltered, and functional ecosystems. Experts watched the transformation with cautious amazement. Field ecologists repeatedly expressed surprise at the speed and depth of recovery. One wildlife tracker remarked it was as if the land had been waiting for a chance to breathe again. Each ecological return triggered another. Water brought plants, plants brought insects, insects brought birds and mammals. All of it hinged on the beavers, tirelessly maintaining their dams and expanding their watery influence across the desert. As one longtime ranger put it, I used to come out here and hear nothing but wind. Now, some mornings, it sounds like a marshland. It's alive. What experts realized was profound. Ecosystems don't always require decades to recover. Sometimes, all it takes is a keystone species and the space to act naturally. When beavers were reintroduced, the goals were ecological restoring balance and testing whether a species skilled at managing water could adapt to the arid landscape. But the ripple effects reached far beyond biology. As water returned, people noticed especially local farmers. In regions near beaver activity, long dry streams began running again, even in dry seasons. Wells held water longer, and the surrounding soil remained moist weeks after rain. Communities near the sites began to shift their thinking. What was once considered a harsh, lifeless terrain was now a place of recovery. Children visited on school trips to watch the dams. Local leaders pushed to expand the program. The beaver, once seen as an odd desert addition, 
became a symbol of transformation, a true desert architect. In just a few years, thousands of beavers quietly reshaped not only the land but the way humans think about conservation. It was no longer just about protecting nature. It was about partnering with it. What began as a limited project with a few hundred beavers across river corridors had expanded across thousands of acres. Satellite images confirmed water in places that had been bone dry for decades, but managing such rapid change posed its own set of challenges. And now, the biggest question – what happens next? With streams flowing again, native grasses returning, and wildlife surging, the once-questioned project is now a model of possibility. Scientists, land managers, and community members are asking how to sustain and possibly replicate this success. Monitoring is the first step. Teams are using drones, satellites, and ground sensors to measure water levels, temperature shifts, biodiversity, and animal migrations. Results are staggering, yet the focus is shifting from recovery to resilience. Are these changes stable? Could one long drought undo the system? That's why seasonal and daily tracking continues. It's not just about what the beavers built, it's about whether it lasts without human intervention. Expansion is under consideration. In Arizona, New Mexico, and southern Utah, experts are studying whether other dry river basins could benefit from similar programs. Beavers aren't a one-size-fits-all solution, but in the right setting, their effect is profound. The greater challenge may be political. Western water rights are deeply complex. Adding beavers means rethinking how water flows and who controls it. These changes raise legal and policy questions far beyond biology. Still, consensus is forming. The project reframed the entire restoration conversation. Until recently, ecological restoration meant expensive equipment, complex engineering, and heavy human management. But the beavers followed no blueprint. Their ancient instincts proved more efficient than many multi-million dollar initiatives. What started as an ecological experiment became a moment of redefinition. We often view nature as broken, something to fix, but here, nature fixed itself with minimal help. Humans introduced the beavers, the beavers did the rest. And in doing so, they reminded us, restoration isn't always about control. Sometimes it's about trusting the right species to do what they were built to do. Today, the beavers are still working, scientists are still observing, and a desert once considered beyond hope is alive again, perhaps offering a model for restoring ecosystems across the globe. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.